Uh -oh. I really fucking hate part five. Oh. <laughs> Curiosity got me on this one. Why I don't like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm just curious to see what his take on it. I mean, I can't get mad at someone for not liking something, but I do want to hear his point of view. Spoilers for all of JoJo's. Now, JoJo's. if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love anime, and more specifically, I love shonen anime. If there's a popular shonen series out there, I probably have an opinion on it. But there's one series that I have a very complicated relationship with. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I okay. do not particularly like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and this all is right. something that surprises people. Because we all know how JoJo's fans are. Some of them. on a stream or something, and someone will say, Hey, Marky, you like anime? You should watch JoJo's. And I'm like, I don't like JoJo's. And they're like, what the fuck? Why don't you like JoJo's? No, I don't like JoJo's. I don't know. People just hate that I don't like JoJo's. So I'll tell you JoJo's? Why, okay? And this isn't going to be a well-formulated argument. This isn't a persuasive essay or anything. I'm not trying to convince anyone not to like JoJo's. This is just my super specific super personal reasoning as to why I don't like it. So just Fair consider enough. this a cosmonaut rant. Our I had a lot of free time. I hadn't really started my YouTube channel for real, so most of my time was spent watching anime or reading manga. And I remember I heard that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was finally getting an anime adaptation, and I'd played so the great. old Capcom fighting game, and I knew some Still gotta play the game. ancient memes about the series, but I never started it. That new anime looked neat, so when the first episode of JoJo's aired, I watched it. And I liked it. So much, in fact, that I decided to just go ahead and read the rest of the manga. So here's the first distinction that I should make. All of my feelings about JoJo's are mostly in regards to the manga. Oh, reading Stone Ocean and Steel Ball Run was hella fun. So I want to go back and read those on my time, of course. I won't put y'all do that but i do want to see what was the difference between the two but he's talking about the manga which i don't know but i'm pretty sure there is a lot of things that was taken out it's going to be so interesting to see stone ocean since i already know what happened but just to now be able to compare the two i think i want to have a little fun with that one Whenever I start a new series and I'm given the choice to pick between the anime or the manga, I usually pick the manga, but that's just me. While there are exceptions, I do find the manga to be the purest form of that author's creative vision. So I, I usually like it more. And it's now, like books I'm versus among movies. The three people in the world that are actually perfectly fine with part one of JoJo's. It's kind of cute and quaint, and even though it's ripping off like a million different series, it still kind of has its own unique personality. Overall, I found part one to be an acceptable introduction. It's also not very long, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. I figured the series has a lot of room to grow, and it drew me in and got me excited to read. I got a feeling that part three, he's not going to like it too much. So when I got to part two, I got exactly what I wanted. It was such a dramatic improvement over part one, and I love that the new protagonist, Joseph, was the complete so opposite gonna come of into play. last hero, Jonathan. And it was just a lot of fun watching a silly man go on a bizarre adventure. This was everything that I imagined it get more I bizarre. about JoJo's in my niche internet anime circles. However, some things still didn't totally vibe with me 100%. For one, I don't really care for the way Araki writes characters. While I love Joseph, I can't say I feel anything for anybody else. When characters die, I feel nothing. Their backstories are bland, if they even have backstories, and their personalities are just not very engaging most of the time. The Pillar Men were threatening, but they weren't nearly as fun to watch as Dio from the previous adventure. But hey. I kept going because I knew Dio was going to come back, and after all, I'd seen so many people claim that part three is where JoJo's really starts, so I figured it was all uphill from here. But I was wrong, because part three, kind of stinky. Kind of stinky. most things that I hate in a long-running shonen series. It's bloated and super long for no reason, and again, the characters are just not doing it for me. Except this really? time, the main character doesn't have the fun charisma that the last joke He's a dick. Had. Or a douche. An like asshole. A cool guy, but he kind of falls flat in this story. There really just aren't enough traits or characteristics to get me invested in him douche, as man. the main character. If I look past the fact that he's just like really cool and edgy, 
then he's got nothing. And it's not like the other characters are very good either. He's a high school. The problem too. is, I think you can categorize most JoJo's characters in one of three slots. The funny, cowardly character, the calm, cool guy, mm-hmm. and the crazy murderer. But sometimes the crazy murderer might turn into a funny, cowardly character. And that's the closest thing you'll get to a character arc in JoJo's, because character arcs simply do not exist in this series. Now, I've gone on record saying that you don't need character arcs to make a story good. A lot of people cite Paddington as an example of this. Paddington is the exact same character no matter what happens in the story, but the story is still good. Goku and Luffy are the most popular shonen characters ever, and they have the same outlook and personality from beginning to end. However, we do see subtle changes in their character over time. They both adapt to the world changing around them, and they let their friends influence how they grow, even if they keep the same core traits throughout the story. But in JoJo's, every single character is flat. Even the ones that I think are decent. The only thing you might get is sometimes an evil character becoming nice. And to further show how lame and forgettable the characters are, most of them die unceremoniously. If you don't like a series where beloved characters are unceremoniously killed, maybe JoJo's isn't for you. I think that the previous Zeppeli deaths were fine because they motivated the hero to fight on, but part three is where people just start dropping like flies, and it's a trend that continues throughout the series. A lot of the deaths in JoJo's are simply there for shock value, and that's not even counting how many fake-out deaths we get, but I'll get into that later. It wasn't until part three that I really started to notice some of this stuff. The cracks were starting to form. These are things that I did not like in previous parts, and I was hoping that maybe the story would grow out of them. And as I started seeing them more and more, I started to get kind of annoyed. It's so goofy, I love it. ...while to accept that. I thought that I was supposed to like part three. Because through osmosis, I had seen so much about it. But a lot of the middle chunk of part three is just so goddamn boring. From the stands to the characters, hey, if he doesn't like the characters, so be it. I love my grandpa Joe. I think more now, because he has my attention, like, I want to see what do you like? What is the animes this guy likes? I would check that out on my own time, but for now, it's all about the JoJo. Fights aren't really as creative or exciting, and the stands are really lame in part three, which makes sense because they're a new thing, but compared to some of the stands that the enemies have in the exact same arc, the main heroes have some really lame-ass powers. Jotaro's stand can punch really fast. Polnareff's stand has a sword. sword. Abdul's stand can shoot fire. fire. And Kakyoin's stand can throw rocks. Ooh, how exciting. I want an action figure of that. Yes, I I was just never excited to see these heroes do anything, let alone win a fight. That is, until the last few bits of part three. When the the last few fights are actually kind of cool. I'd say everything from the pet shop fight upward is actually pretty decent. And it just shows me that this arc didn't need to be that long. I think part of the reason why I liked part two so much is because it wasn't really that bloated. It wasn't long enough. like everything was kind of there on purpose to service the story. I feel like it didn't really waste your time too much. And in part three, it really does waste your time. But I gotta say, the last battle in part three is pretty fucking good. It's probably Very the good. best fight in the entire series. Very it's good. so good that it almost tricked me into forgetting that I did not enjoy a majority of the rest of the arc. I still had to read part eight, but as for now, animated wise, that fight and that intro when they do the time stopper thing. It's the world. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to touch them. Sorry. Sound effects and all. It's, oh my God. Oh my god, I'm standing right now. Let me chill out. I think at this point, I started to feel the burnout just a little bit. And I heard that part four was like kind of low stakes and more akin to a slice of life series. And I thought the new characters looked kind of lame design wise. They I are rough to look at sometimes, really but it, I got used to it. But boy, was I wrong because part four 
is the best part in JoJo's. Everything that people love about JoJo's is here, and it's strongest in Diamond is Unbreakable. It was good. Out of it nowhere, the characters are like actually likable, and they have a tighter friendship than the characters in previous parts, so they're immediately more engaging. And all the characters are pretty unique from one another because there's not too many of them, and they have some of the most fun character traits, with Rohan not only being my favorite JoJo's character, but one of my favorite shonen characters. It's called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and this is the one arc where it truly feels like a guy named Jojo is experiencing a bizarre adventure and acting appropriately. The fact that Josuke is a normal fucking dude is why I love him more than the other Jojos. He's the What's most it? relatable one by Don't far, and run. although he doesn't Regular. change much over the course of the story, he's just solid. Hell, even Jotaro is good in part four. Oh, okay. While his cool guy routine wore thin on me over the course of the last adventure, in this one he just shows up every once in a while to be a badass. I think he's best used sparingly, and part four is proof of that. And while part four is a slice of life story, it's also like a supernatural murder mystery. It's a surprisingly fun premise. Being focused on a smaller scale means you get to really appreciate the quirkiness of the story. The wacky stuff isn't just weird for the sake of it, it's genuinely charming. And that's one of the biggest problems that JoJo has in my opinion, trying to balance wackiness with consistency. Since everything in part 4 is already kind of mundane, the weird shit stands out appropriately. It's an arc where you can have a fight just centered around rock, paper, scissors, and it's pretty exciting. Yeah, that was wild. Not my favorite. One of the most iconic encounters features Jojo and Okuyatsu the in a Italian restaurant where they're just super cautious of the chef for no reason other than the fact that the story expects you to be cautious of him. And then in the end, he just turns out to be a chill guy. There's a storyline where the characters meet someone who claims to be an alien, and we never actually find out if he's an alien or not, and it's actually really fucking funny. Part 4 is perfect at balancing the mundane with the strange, and that is exactly what JoJo's needs. Also, I'll say- As for now, Part 3 is my favorite. This is where Araki's style really grew on. I don't know, Part 5. Ooh, you convey some of the shit that JoJo's has in 2D black and white, but Part 4 has the most consistent art up to this point. Prince. I just overall love Part 4. This is where I finally realized that I might actually like this series. It seemed like Araki Until... realized what made previous parts good and bad, and took those things to grow as an author and an artist. Diamond is Unbreakable is the only time that I did not want a JoJo's arc to end. I genuinely wanted to keep enjoying adventures with these characters, whereas in previous arcs, I was perfectly fine with moving on. But still, after part four, I was hyped to keep going. I was on cloud nine. Part I five, y'all. Uh -oh. I really fucking hate part five. <laughs> Back in my day, everybody I knew hated part five because it's garbage. It's one of the messiest shonen storylines I've ever read. And some people say, oh, you probably just read bad translations. Bitch, I went through it again to see if I was just imagining how bad it is. No, part four is still good with bad translations, so this is not an excuse. Part five has everything that I hated in previous JoJo's parts, yeah, part three. but amped up to 11. The characters Beautiful. are whack. Calm, cool guy. Calm, cool guy. <laughs> Calm, cool guy. Funny cowards. Giorno is a joke. He's the worst JoJo by far. Well, Even people who like part five agree with me. If you ask me, I Giorno like and Bruno should be merged into one character. Don't agree. <laughs> Just so you know, I don't agree. But, you know, that's besides the point. Even people who like part five agree with me. If you ask me, Giorno and Bruno should be merged into one character. Bruno is the more compelling character with the more interesting stand and more stake in the actual story. Giorno is just a guy. Even the fact that he's Dio's son goes completely unused in the story. Okay, that is true. We learned that he is Dio's son at the very beginning, and that's pretty much it. We just know that it's his son, and we learned that Dio had some other children. Those who've read it knows what I'm talking about, but yeah, Dio got some kids running around here. Just like Joe Toro got some kids running around here, you know? But the thing about part six is they actually come together, he never meets up with his dad. Honestly, I think that would have been kind of cool. I under, I get it. I get that part. He is Dio's son, but that's all we get from it. It's just Dio's son. 
the blonde hair tells it all. Well, technically, he's Theo and Jojo's son. I mean... He could just as well be some random dude and nothing would change. I can't even name a single character trait for Giorno. He's the only Jojo that I can say that about. And I should point out that Araki's writing in part five is absolute garbage. Oh shit, I made one of the main characters too strong. Oh well, he's out of the story. He flew back to his home planet. But that's an easy one, right? No, everybody talks about that. Fugo gets kicked out of the story, and it's really stupid, but you're not supposed to talk about that because that's too easy. All right, well, how come the main villain is revealed so late into the story? Because at this point, you don't have enough time to become invested in him, and that sucks because he has the most potential out of any character in this arc. JoJo's is still an action shonen series, so I think it's really important to try to flesh out the villain. You know why Dio is the best villain in JoJo's? Because you get the most time to devoted to fleshing him out. Also, it. why does Araki keep doing fake-out deaths? When did we start thinking this is acceptable? How many times does Mista die in part five? Why does Paul Nareff turn into a turtle? This is where the wackiness of JoJo's stops the being bizarreness. cute for me. It is no longer a feature. It is now a bug. And this is specific to the manga, but holy shit, Araki's art takes a nosedive here. The original manga is nearly I wanna impossible read it. to decipher I in I most can't bites. Judge, so I get I that JoJo's has some high concept shit, but I seriously cannot tell what the fuck I'm supposed to be looking at half the time. And everyone says that part five is cool because of the fights the fights but it's Marcus cool. the fights are like so the kids. cool why do I care about the fights if I don't care about the story or the characters, the characters. that are in the fights I and like to top characters. all of it off part five is so goddamn long part five is basically just part three again except you don't get a cool final battle you get some deus ex machina ass pull bullshit which i mean i guess part three kind of had that but i liked it there so it's different i don't know i just think that jotaro teaching himself how to stop time through sheer force of will is much cooler than just getting a new superpower because the story needs you to beat the bad guy Yes. And yes, I know that my personal circumstances and how I went about enjoying this series are different than other people's. A lot of people just got to watch the anime where a lot of the visual clutter is cleared up and a lot of the fat is trimmed. But the anime did not exist when I read it and I am not about to go back and watch like fucking 40 episodes of an anime that I know I don't like. And yeah, I probably wouldn't be as mad or exhausted with the series if I hadn't tried to binge it in two months years ago. But at that point, JoJo's just wasn't fun for me anymore. I was not having a good time. But I still fucking finished part five because I told myself I would. And I heard part six was interesting. Very interesting. And I heard that Jolene was cool and, you know, a unique JoJo for once. Yes. But it just wasn't enough. I think the final Fair nail enough. in the coffin was me forcing myself to read part six when I was genuinely exhausted with the series. The problem I have with JoJo's is that I love part four too much. I love it so much that Respecting I hate that every all time. the following parts for not being as good. And yes, part six is not as bad as part five, but it's still not as good as part four. So I really didn't care. I didn't like a lot of the characters. I didn't really care about the story. There were still a lot of inconsistencies, but I finished part six out of pure obligation to myself, even though nobody told me to. And honestly, nowadays, I don't remember anything in part six. I read the whole thing, and I can't tell you one thing that happens in it. By this point, I was so empty and just so very done with JoJo's, so this is where I tapped out. But for years, I told myself that maybe under the right Still circumstances, well, I might pick it up again. Because everybody you swears should. on their mama that part seven is godlike. But then something it's unexpected nice, it's fun. happened. JoJo's got really popular. Back when I read JoJo's, I was lucky to find a single Dio cosplayer at a convention. And forget finding any physical merchandise in the States. The anime was just finishing part two and it was still kind of niche. But as years went on, people became fucking obsessed with this show. And JoJo's is huge now. And the fans are really fucking annoying. You see them everywhere pushing the series on people like it's their fucking Bible. Anime's not weird. Yes, it can have its weird moments, but I won't call it weird. I don't know. 
People get upset about people watching things and not liking things. It's like, yo, you like what you like, I guess. I enjoy it, so that's good. That That's all I care about. Sometimes I see some random jerk off on the internet saying that they don't like anime. And without fail, there's always at least one weirdo who says, Hey, I know you don't like anime, but you should really watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you recommend that as someone's first show? And I will admit, this pushed me away from the series a lot more. Hey, read part seven, Marky. I know you don't like JoJo's, but you gotta read part seven. Man, leave me alone, all right? I don't want it anymore. At this point, I feel like my taste in shonen is done developing. Since quitting JoJo's, I've read a lot of shonen that I, I actually like. I haven't watched a the second season yet. Than the good stuff that I enjoyed in JoJo's. I still gotta watch And I don't that. think you can compare every shonen to each other, but since quitting JoJo's, I've read One Piece, a story that actually made me cry. And if you know me, media rarely makes me cry. And then oh, the Hunter Hunter cry? anime came Yeah, out, I haven't finished that either. I realized what shonen meant to me. I don't know, that's just my personal taste. I'm not saying that you're a dummy for liking JoJo's. I'm just telling you why I don't like it. If you like it, that's great. It's not a bad series. Just don't be surprised that some people don't like it. It's not a perfect series. And yeah, I think a lot of the wacky inconsistencies are part of the charm, but that charm just doesn't work on everybody. For me, JoJo's was like a bad ex. There was excitement in the beginning of the relationship, and there was a period of time where I thought I was in love, but things just grew sour for me, and I started to notice some traits that I did not like so much. So am I ever gonna go and read part seven? I don't know, maybe. It's possible, but it's not really a priority of mine. But I will say that every time you guys tell me to read it, I push it back by another year. I have to say, uh, I'm still on that fence about part eight. It's like, should I go ahead? I know I am, but when, I don't know. Because of course I'm gonna finish this out, even if it's garbage. I don't care, I'll, I'll watch the garbage. One man's garbage is another man's treasure. One man's trash is another man's treasure. I think that's how it is. I think that's how it goes. But nonetheless, like he doesn't like it, so be it. We got opposite opinion on which arc he likes the most. I like part three and part five. Part three and part five are top up there. Shit, I go live. I see Steel Ball Run get made. That might be interesting too. The thing that got me so hooked on part one JoJo, it was the fact that that person at the end did not survive. I've never seen anything cut off a main character. It got my attention off jump just for that. And then these stands came into play in the, the music reference. Oh, oh my God. When I watched Costello and her kiss, her kiss stand, you know, at the end of the day, I love it. But there we go, Blaze Squad. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you blaze up the like button. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, go ahead and comment what is your favorite JoJo. Or if you don't, just say I don't like the shit. And I will see you guys in the next video.